As we near the halfway mark of 2022, we have seen some phenomenal finishes all the way from heavyweight to women's strawweight. But which weight class has produced the most finishes? Join me as we look at each weight class's general finishing rate, their knockout and submission rate, the top three weight classes by finishing rate, and lastly, we'll compare 2022's data to 2021's. We will begin at heavyweight and move down to women's strawweight, but just to inform you, I have compiled these stats by myself using the results that are posted by Tapology during the UFC events. The UFC heavyweight division has featured 18 fights, with 11 of them ending by way of a finish. We saw breakout performances from rising stars in Tai Tuivasa with his knockout win over Derek Lewis, to Tom Aspinall's Kamor victory over Alexander Volkov at UFC London. With 61% of heavyweight fights in 2022 ending by a finish, the weight class ranks second overall compared to the other UFC weight classes. Ranking number three overall is the UFC light heavyweight division, which has had a history of producing spectacular finishes for the promotion. With a 59% finishing rate so far in 2022, fans can continue to expect highlight reel knockouts and submissions from the 205ers. Prospect Jailton Almeida dominated in his UFC debut, Khalil Roundtree and Jamal Hill both had fire up finishes, and my personal favorite, Paul Craig's triangle victory over Nikita Krylov at UFC London. I'm recording this prior to the title fight at 275, which very well may feature another classic high-level UFC light heavyweight finish. To my surprise, the middleweight division is a bit low, only having a 40% finishing rate in 20 fights. While this sounds like a decent rate, compared to the other UFC men's divisions, only flyweight ranks lower in terms of finishing rate at 33.3%. Apart from Chidi Njokawani's two KOs and Jared Cannonier's stoppage of Brunson, middleweight has featured mainly submission wins from younger fighters. There are some elite middleweight fights on the horizon that have the potential for stoppages, so it is possible that the middleweight division can get back to the success rates that we saw last year in 2021 when it ranked third overall. With a mere 41% finishing rate, including 10 knockouts and 2 submissions, welterweight, interestingly enough, features the biggest gap between the number of knockouts and the number of submissions across all divisions. Now, in terms of young talent, there haven't been many other divisions like welterweight that have produced prospects in 2022 such as the likes of Jack Della Maddalena, Michael Morales, Shavkat Rachmanov, and of course Andre Fialio. Fialio and Chidi and Jokowani are so far the only fighters to have two finishes in 2022, and it is entirely possible that Fialio could have a third if he puts away Jake Matthews at UFC 275. The UFC Lightweight Division This division has the highest finishing rate the highest knockout rate, and the highest submission rate. With an incredible 72% finishing rate in 29 fights, over 7 out of every 10 lightweight fights ends by a finish. 12 knockouts from legends, prospects, and contenders, KOs from Jim Miller, Armin Saryukian, Jalen Turner, Ilya Taporia, and of course Michael Chandler's KO of the Year contender over Tony Ferguson. With 9 wins via sub, Lightweight has produced equally as electric submission wins from rising stars such as Terrence McKinney and Patty Pimblett, as well as the champion Charles Oliveira's finish of Justin Gaethje. A star-studded division full of finishers from early prelim fighters to the champion himself, who may be the most dangerous finisher in the history of the UFC. The men's UFC featherweight division gave us similar breakthrough wins from the likes of David Onama, Arnold Allen, Charles Jordan, and fan favorite Chase Hooper. With the amount of talent in the featherweight division, especially in the top 10, it is rare when finishes occur at that high of a level. Folk's stoppage win over the Korean Zombie was very impressive, and it reminds fans that he could finish fights of this magnitude. While only at a 44% finishing rate, featherweight fights are consistently high level, and when finishes occur, they are almost always spectacular. Enter the men's bantamweight division, a weight class full of talent across all promotions and levels. The UFC Bantamweight division not only has a high level of talent, but the majority of the fights have ended by finish so far in 2022. With 52% of 23 fights ending by finish, Bantamweight currently sits at number 4 for highest finishing rate which is impressive for a smaller weight class. 8 knockout victories including Song Yadong's demolition of Marlon Moraes, and 4 submission wins from prospects such as Saeed Nurmagomedov and Kyler Phillips. While men's flyweight has never been known for its finishes, and the stats reflect that so far in 2022, flyweight has so much talent and the fights are always incredibly fast-paced and typically so close that they are worth a watch for the action. 
The first flyweight finish of the year saw underdog Malcolm Gordon earning a TKO victory by arm injury, which was rather anticlimactic, but was followed up by Mohamed Mokhaev's spectacular flying knee into a submission win at UFC London. Action fighters such as Brandon Roy Val and Kai Car of France have been successful weaponizing pressure and pace in this division, and Kai has even earned a title fight for the interim belt in a rematch against Brandon Moreno, which should be a great fight. Since there haven't been many finishes in some of the women's divisions this year, I've combined a few of them and I'll mention some of the highlights. Women's featherweight, two fights, no finishes, still no rankings, that is all. There have been seven women's bantamweight fights this year, but only one has ended by a finish, which was Stephanie Eggers' armbar win over Jessica Rose Clark. Women's bantamweight was once the glory division of the UFC. I believe Strawway has since taken over, but there are certainly big fights coming up, including the rematch between Nunez and Pena. Flyweight and Strawway have featured the most women's fights in the UFC so far, with 17 at Flyweight and 14 at Strawway. Women's Flyweight ranks number one in overall finishing rate, knockout rate, and submission rate compared to the other women's divisions. Women's flyweight actually has a higher finishing rate than the men's flyweight and middleweight divisions. Molly McCann's spinning elbow knockout blew the roof off of the O2 Arena in London, and flyweight prospects Miranda Maverick, Alexa Grasso, and Aaron Blanchfield all won by submission. Women's strawweight may be the most talent-rich division in all of women's MMA. As shown by how many times the belt has changed hands within the last few years, strawweight fights are always competitive time in and time out. Strawweight has held a finishing rate of 29% and three quarters of the finishes have been submissions. Jessica Andrade definitely has the top finish in her division in my opinion when she submitted Amanda Lemos with a rare standing arm triangle. Of course, we need to account for catchweight fights as well as there have been four of them this year, all of which have been men's fights. Three out of four catchweight fights have ended by a finish, and while that technically would be the highest finishing rate on our list, there aren't enough fights to fairly put catchweight in our top three. All of the finishes were great, but Islam Makachev's dominant round one TKO over Bobby Green stood out the most to me. Here are the top three divisions in the UFC by finishing rate at almost the halfway point of 2022. Naturally, this will change, but I thought that it would be interesting to see where we are at the halfway mark and compare this to 2021's total data. First, we see the premier division of the UFC, the lightweight division, taking a commanding lead in finishing rate at the start of the year. Heavyweight and light heavyweight typically produce more finishes, so it is understandable to see them at 2 and 3, but the fact that the lightweight division has so many stars and the fights deliver more often than not, we as fans should appreciate how these 155ers have been performing as of late. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this chart that I've made here, so please pause the video if you would like but I will discuss the totals at the bottom of the image. There have been 220 UFC fights as we head into UFC 275 on June 11th. 105 fights have ended by either a knockout or submission, meaning the UFC has had an overall finishing rate of 47.8%. Regarding finishes, there have been more knockouts than submissions so far, with there having been 59 knockouts to 46 submissions and of course one DQ. More than a quarter of all UFC fights this year have ended by a knockout, and that is a trend that I'm sure the UFC brass would love to see continue. In the final segment of the video, we'll compare our current stats to last year's totals. Starting with the overall finishing rate, 243 fights out of 506 fights ended by a finish in 2021, 48%, which is exactly where we are sitting at right now in 2022. 2021 was the year of the KO as more than a third of all fights ended by a knockout, which is a phenomenal stat to have for the promotion. Taking a look at the top three weight classes by finishing rate in 2021, heavyweight took the top spot with a 62% finishing rate, lightweights performed last year as well, taking the number two spot, and middleweight was actually third with 55% of fights ending by a finish. Middleweight is currently only at a 40% finishing rate and would need a ton of finishes in the final half of the year in order to get back into the top three. With some phenomenal fights coming up soon and many unannounced bangers in the works, the UFC matchmakers have been on fire lately and I'm sure that they will continue to produce some great fights. These kinds of stat-driven MMA videos will be the primary focus of the content on my channel. I've been posting stats on my Twitter at crispy underscore MMA, such as the records of each country in the UFC, what the record is for short notice fighters and fighters who miss weight, and many other cool stats like these. This channel gives me another outlet for posting these stats, and down the line, I might dabble into other kinds of more entertainment-based content. Thank you for clicking on the video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for some of this future content.
Thank you.